Good morning there. This is uh, Pastor Jeff. It is Thursday, August 10th. I am going to be uh, reading the scripture and preaching the sermon that was preached on August 6th and August 9th. It was year A, 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Our scripture reading was from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. I'll read the scripture and then preach the sermon. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But the crowds heard it. They followed him on foot from towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not to go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were around five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. What a miracle story. Jesus takes five loaves and two fishes and feeds 5,000 men. Oh yeah, their wives and children as well. Today, I want to put the miracle on the shelf and not talk about it. The scripture that I just read for you begins with these five words. Now, when Jesus heard this, as Lutherans, most of us do not bring our Bibles to church. Thus, when we read verse 13, most, if not all, of you could not glance up and see what the previous 12 verses were spoken about. If you would take a look, you would be reading about the gruesome murder of John the Baptist and John's disciples burying him. After they buried John, they went on a journey to find Jesus. When they find him, they share with him about the news of John's death. When Jesus hears the news, he withdraws. He decides that it is time to go on a little boat ride. When the time on the water ends, we hear that he lands at a deserted place by himself. Scripture does not give us a reason for the trip, so we can allow our imaginations to run loose. Here are two speculations. One, Jesus simply withdraws to deal with the death of John the Baptist. Many of us know the sting of death and the grief that it brings, and each one of us deals with it in a different way. For Jesus, a boat ride to a deserted place and having some alone time is just what the doctor ordered. Two, Jesus decides that he needs to get away for a brief moment to contemplate his fate. He knows that he is going to face a very similar ending. However, Jesus is not by himself for too long. Individuals hear that he is on the move and they come from all of the different villages to be with him. When Jesus sees them, he has compassion for them. Compassion is definitely a word that we zeroed in on when we had our Bible study on Tuesday. Compassion is defined in Webster's Dictionary as a sympathetic consciousness of others. Distress together with a desire to alleviate it. 
Now, it's one thing to sympathize with someone, but it is something else to feel a desire to alleviate the suffering or distress. That's taking it to the next level. With me focusing in on compassion, let us go a little deeper with the word. The Latin root word for compassion is pati, which means to suffer. And the prefix calm means with. So compassion, originating from compati, literally means to suffer with. The connection of suffering with another person brings compassion beyond sympathy and into the realm of empathy. If you want to take one additional step, we can see that the Greek word reflects this deep, wrenching movement from the depths of the bowels. In other words, Jesus responds to the suffering of people from the depths of his being. Remember, he did this while he was in the midst of grief and contemplation on the leaders that are coming after him next. Thus, when we read, hear, and discuss this passage, I think that it would be wise if we did it through the lens of compassion and not necessarily the lens of a miracle. Even though we have to admit it's a pretty impressive miracle. When we think about Jesus and compassion, we recognize that Jesus operates in a completely different realm than Herod and the Roman authority. As I mentioned, Jesus departed when he heard the news about John the Baptist, which is in verses 1 through 12 if you want to take a look. You may or may not remember that John's death came at a lavish birthday spread in Herod's palace. The Romans loved their parties. They were all about stockpiling the finest goods and spending all the luxury on themselves and their elite guests that could return the favor. Now, on the other hand, the life of Jesus, we're not seeing him accumulating anything for himself. He is always looking out for the other. In the story that we heard, Jesus gives thanks and has sincere gratitude for the small amount of food that they have. He then shows generous hospitality to the large crowd that has gathered. Those who have gathered have little to nothing to offer Jesus and the disciples in return. We had a first reading and it tied into the gospel reading both in manner of food and compassion to those with litter. Here are some of those words from Isaiah. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come anyway. Buy and eat. Come, buy your drinks. Buy wine and milk. Buy without money. Everything's free. Jesus feeding the crowd and Isaiah inviting those with nothing to still come and that they can buy and eat is vastly different than what we are experiencing in our world today. Hunger is a real issue in the U.S. Did you know that in 2022, 49 million people turned to food banks and community programs for help? putting food on the table. When it comes to food insecurity in the U.S., there are 34 million individuals who face it on a daily basis, and this includes 9 million children. There is not a county in the country that is immune to it. Unfortunately, there is also a harsh reality out there that many do not want to acknowledge, and that is the fact that 
hunger and African American, Latino, and Native American communities are much higher because of injustices. For America to achieve a hunger-free status, we must address the root causes of hunger and then face the structure and the inequities that exist. And I truly believe that the church can help. Each Sunday or Wednesday, as we pray, give us today our daily bread. God provided in Isaiah, and God provided in Matthew, and God provides today. In both Isaiah and Matthew, the community helped with the food distribution. We, as a church community, can help make sure that our community members have food. We already do this through the food pantry outside of our church building. We do it by placing donations in the Lakeshore cap box and collections. We do it by hosting community meals, and we can do more. I believe individuals want to be part of a church community that makes a difference in the lives of the community that they live in. And this holy space can be that place. The last few weeks, hospitality and compassion has really been swirling around my head. I think that we as a church have a real opportunity to show hospitality and compassion to the community that surrounds us. One of the ways that we do this is through our community emergency fund. We as a church receive calls from individuals living in our community who are in need. When we have the financial capacity to do so, we help individuals with rent assistance and help with utility bills. Every month, on the first of the month, we have two offerings, and the noisy offering goes to help fund this ministry. It is a way that we can partner with God as God redeems the world. Thus, when you drop your change, dollars, or checks in the plate, please know that because of you, someone may not be evicted, or someone may be able to walk into their house, flip that light switch on, and the light can now come on instead of being in darkness. So let me go back to the story that we heard. In the scripture, it is clear that Jesus had compassion, but compassion was not enough. He also had sympathy. With compassion and sympathy, Jesus was compelled to act. In our Bible study on Tuesday, we ended with the study on the following question. How might you act to alleviate the suffering of someone this week? Hopefully, they have been chewing on that question, and now maybe you can now chew on it as well. I think many times that we may have sympathy for individuals, but the emotion that is deep inside of us is not acted upon. So let me conclude by reminding you that in this story, the disciples were wanting to send people away. They were not being callous. Those folks had been out there all day. It is going to be dark soon. They needed to get back to the villages so they could eat and sleep. The disciples were simply aware of their location. However, Jesus tells them that they do not have to go away. He shared with the disciples that they had food. They sat down and shared their resources. I think that we are in the same boat as the disciples. I understand. It is tough. We look at our resources and think we have too little. We think that what we have is too limited to make an impact. However, I want to challenge that perception. I want to challenge you to see all the great things that are happening and the ways that our church community is impacting the community that we live in. Hear these final words. In the kingdom of heaven, there is compassion. People share their resources, and there is enough for everyone. Friends, may we be moved by compassion and attend to the spiritual and physical needs of God's people. Amen.